but you wouldn't know it by listening to the anti-Trump media. Here to weigh in, former Trump campaign manager and co-author of the book, Let Trump Be Trump, Corey Lewandowski. Good morning, Corey. Hey, Corey. Morning. What do you think? Good the, morning. What do you think the media has largely missed? Well, they've missed so many things. If you think of what this president's been able to achieve in 2018, 2.5 million new jobs have been created in this uh, first six months of this year. Historic tax cuts are now taking effect. The release of American hostages overseas that the president personally negotiated without giving boatloads of cash to these countries. And then you think about what he said when he was over in Davos, Switzerland. America is open for business. You couple that with the fact that this president has assigned the Department of Homeland Security to work with at-risk schools to harden those so that our children are safe. And you think about all the things he's been able to achieve, historic unemployment for uh, African Americans, historic levels of unemployment for the Hispanic community, a stock market which continues to go up, and those are just the tip of the iceberg. You know, and then you look at what Secretary Pompeo and now the president is going to be doing on June 12th, which mm -hmm. is a historic summit <clears throat> with Kim Jong-un to potentially denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. What more can the American people ask for? Well, Corey, and yet he's faced un, a historic <clears throat> resistance, unprecedented from all quarters, from never Trumpers to the media to Democrats. Yet what has been the key to him pushing through that and fighting through that and getting to the place where these very real accomplishments have added up? Well, this president has forced Congress to continue to act and continue to move on his agenda. And I know that he wants Congress to do more. He's looking at an FY 2019 budget, which is going to cut $3 trillion over the next 10 years so that we're not spending more than we're bringing in every year. But, you know, we've got more circuit court justices approved in this administration than any administration ever. But Congress needs to stay in session. They need to keep working. They need to go back and they need to get these ambassadors approved so we don't have career diplomats uh, holding over in some of those positions. Congress has to get on the president's team and accomplish what he wants, mm -hmm. which is more for the American people. What do you think of this letter that has just been leaked out from the New York Times, letter from uh, the president's top attorneys back in January sent to the Mueller team uh, talking about the interview and reasons why they shouldn't do it, and the main one being that the president has the power to shut this thing all down. What is your response to that? Well, first and foremost, it goes right back to the, the biggest problem that this administration has had, which is leaks coming from either inside the building or somewhere within the administration. And I don't know where this information was leaked from. It's, if it's from the Mueller team, that's very concerning. If it's from someone within the administration, that's even more concerning. But I think the premise is exactly right. Uh, if, if the president were to ask me, and he never has, I would recommend not sitting down with the Mueller team, because what the Mueller team can do is they can write a report to the Department of Justice and ultimately to Congress on if there was any collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. And I know unequivocally when I was there, there was no collusion, there was no coordination, and they have all of the evidence to already demonstrate that. This investigation has been taking place now to the tune of mm -hmm. over $10 million for about a year and a half. It's time to end the investigation okay, Corey, and tell the American people what we already know. Okay, Corey, but on the substance of the letter, they seem to be making the, the contention, the president's lawyers, that he cannot face obstruction of justice charges because he's the top executive, a very wide berth on executive power. Do you believe the president is above the law? No, look, no, nobody is above the law, but I think what they have argued, and it makes a lot of sense to me, is that if you try to subpoena the president, the, the Giuliani uh, legal team is going to take that to court to say the president cannot be subpoenaed in this particular issue. Now, if they can work out uh, without a subpoena, that's one thing. But they have laid out the argument that the president is above a subpoena in this issue based on legal precedence. And that legal precedence goes back to the Clinton administration in the late 90s, uh, where they, the Justice Department ruled the very same thing. So that's what I believe they've based this on. And again, I'm not an attorney, but that's what I understand yeah. this to be from. Well, he's all got right. the right to fire his FBI director. I mean, that's uh, yeah. at the heart of a lot of this. Corey, Corey. thank you for your time. We'll Appreciate see where it. all this goes. Good to see you this morning. My right. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Still to come, former White House Chief of Staff, Reince Priebus, he is here live. Plus, he is simply a baseball legend, best known for leading the 1986 New York Mets to the win.